I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 17th of January, 2024. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I've been on a tight schedule all week, and so I'm taking an easy one today. I'm on the GoPro, and we're going to get through one pretty quickly. I can't quite see how the light is. I'm hoping that this looks okay. It seems kind of cool, but on the, I have so much glare on the screen, and it's kind of dark, so I can't tell if this looks awesome or terrible. So we're going to find out, but it's going to be a, a quick one today. We're going to be talking about just how easy is a border run, and, and just how little impact is it for you? because we had a short about this but i really want to cover a little bit of this like what is it realistically like doing border runs um, because i think you should be embracing just how simple border runs are here in nicaragua and costa rica there's so many people who do them they wouldn't be doing it so often if it wasn't a great system so we're gonna get to that right after the bump Before we dig into today's topic, I just want to mention thank you to everyone who has been paying attention. We have been pushing some of the other channels uh, that I work on, um, specifically Nika Roomba. Now we have the Fuji camera is able to do the long form videos much better. We're still learning a lot of stuff, so it's not quite there yet. But we did our first episode on Friday night with Mad Heavier uh, when they played at Via Via. And that is up on uh, YouTube slash at uh, Nika Roomba. I mean, you can go watch that concert. It's about two hours long. The audio is not dialed in. That's going to take some work, but the video is spot on, I think, or nearly. You got to do some uh, locking of the of the, uh, the the focus. But other than that, we've, we've really got it, I think, pretty good. Very happy with how that's looking, and the camera made it for the whole thing. So check out Nika Roomba. I really appreciate it. Just, just go over, watch some videos, subscribe. Like that's, like, that's it. You don't have to go donate or anything like that. Like, just go participate in that community too, and that would mean so much. And the other, so I recently got, uh, well, I've had for a long time, my kids just recently got a new VR headset, and uh, we haven't used one for, for years. Um, and so I hooked it up and I'm like, oh, can I, can I play with this for a little bit? And I went into YouTube and I went and watched Nicaragua 360, which is another pet project of mine, where we just do 360 degree videos of different locations around Nicaragua. Often it's like really chill, just some music, and we show a lake or a volcano, just some beautiful scenery, maybe a, a festival going on. And the idea is that it gives you this really immersive experience into Nicaragua in a way that we can't do here on the show. And I know that there's lots of different ways that you can engage with that content. You can move a camera around, I'm sorry, a phone around when you're looking at it. You can scroll with your mouse. You can use a remote with the TV. And I knew that this worked with the VR headset, which is why I wanted to try it out, but I've never actually gotten to do it. And, and putting on the VR headset and having the uh, completely surrounding you, 100%, 360 degrees, no matter where you turn your head, you have something to look at, that's really amazing it really is immersive i wish it was also 3d but it feels almost 3d because no matter where you look you're looking at something and it lets you really kind of feel like you're floating above whatever environment we're filming in and it, it's fun to make that show and i really appreciate the opportunity to do so and it, and it forces me to go out and explore nicaragua in new and different ways than i normally would do like it makes me go to a mirror door and just hang out for a few minutes and enjoy how beautiful it is so that you guys can enjoy how beautiful it is too but that makes for a really cool experience and I'm really glad I get to do that. So if you guys could also head over there, even if you don't have a VR headset, go check that out. But any of you who do, oh my, it is cool. Please put on the VR headset, check it out. And remember all those like subscribes, like we're trying to get those channels all up to at least a thousand subscribers. And, and we have so many uh, loyal, great family members here on this channel that I know you guys could pop over there and just make it happen, make all those channels explode and and, and, you know, none of them are monetized, but we have such neat content, it would mean a lot to get it out. Okay, so today's real topic is about border runs. So we've got a number of videos on these. If you have not seen anything about border runs, go watch a few of those. But basically, this is when you have a tourist visa that's going to expire. You need to go to a international border, what we call a hard border. Those are the ones that actually stamp your passport, and you officially go through the entire process of leaving a country, and then the entire process of re-entering a country. And then if you do that and go straight back into the country you came from, it's called a border run, because you're making a run for the border. Not exactly like Taco Bell, but sometimes we stop at Taco Bell, so sometimes it's more like that than you think. Anyway, I digress. We are uh, talking about renewing your visa. So here in Nicaragua, specifically, some important bits to know. One is that if you're coming in on a tourist visa, you automatically get 90 days under normal circumstances, which can be renewed three times at 30 days each for a total of 180 days. At that last renewal, that's at your 150-day mark, when you do that renewal, you must show an exit ticket. That could be a plane ticket, that could be a bus ticket, it could be something. Shuttle. 
but it can't be taxi, it can't be I'm gonna drive myself. You might be able to argue for those things, but I don't know of an official process for that. So expect you have to have a ticket. If you're leaving at 150 days, you can do anything you want. But if you're going from the 150 to 180, you gotta show that you're prepared to get out by that 180. Uh, at the 180, all that is required is that you cross a border. Now, if you're flying, that's easy, but if you're not flying, you have to drive or walk or whatever across one of the hard borders. Nicaragua only has two hard borders. To the south is the obvious one of Costa Rica. That's what everyone uses. It's nice and easy. To the north, you may think that the border is at Honduras, but it is not. For reasons we've explained in other videos, that is inside the CA4. Your hard border is at Mexico, which is much farther away than it seems, so very few people do it. You're certainly willing, or you're certainly allowed to do it at Mexico. It's just really far away. Now, if you're flying to Mexico, flying to Panama, that's fine. But you, you've got to get on a plane and go to those places. Don't be fooled. A flight to San Salvador does not count. That is still within the CA4 border zone. It's not count as a hard border, does not reset your visa. So you'll run into problems if you try to do it that way. And a ticket to there will not count as your exit ticket at your 150-day uh, renewal for that last 30 days. So 180 days means as long as you're staying out for maybe two days each time, you're looking at basically an entire year or if you go just out and right back in each time, just a few days short of an entire year by doing a single border run. At the end of an entire year, you would have to do your second border run. So we're talking about a process that essentially is every six months. And that is if you are just staying in the country and never going anywhere. If your goal is to never leave Nicaragua, but you need to do a border run, every 180 days you have to go out for several minutes. That is the requirement, just out, go through the line, come right back into the country. That's it. Now, that, if you think about it, is not very much effort. It's really hard to come up with very many things you do in life that require some amount of government interaction that is as simple as that. In fact, if I had to renew my driver's license once a year, that would be more effort than going to the border twice here. So it's all perspective, right? It's really not a big deal. And considering that you're living in a foreign country without going through the incredibly lengthy and time-consuming process of residency or something similar, it is a really really easy system. But even if you're just comparing it to normal errands that you run in life, it's a pretty easy system, not something that most people need to be worried about in any way. I'm always really shocked by how, when people say things like they've made decisions or they're worried about, or they're, they're just somehow being impacted by the thought of doing border runs. It blows my mind because I really don't know anyone, even really elderly expats who live here, who are in a position where the border run is any amount of effort whatsoever. It's still just get in a car, head to the border, walk over, walk back, come back home, done. So how far is it to get to the border? If you're coming from up here in Leon or Chinandega, you're looking at four, four and a half hours to get to the border by car. If you're coming from an Esteli or a Hinotega, I'm not exactly sure, but I guess more like five, five and a half hours. Matagalpa is probably more like four, four and a half. If you're coming from like Managua, you're looking at like two and a half. If you're coming from Rivas or Granada, even less. So a lot of the country, the, a lot of the population, it is not that far. But if you figure four hours to be pretty easy, then almost everywhere in the country that you would want to be and six hours covers basically anywhere you could reasonably be um, if you're you know in remote areas of the jungle far to the northeast yes you could come up with spots that take longer to get to the border but those are not places where there are expats there's also not places where there are nicaraguans so realistically every expat i've ever heard of is within six hours of a hard border so that's about the maximum you would ever have to worry about what we do here if we're going to do a border run day, so we get up early in the morning, often like four o'clock, and we zip straight to the border. Of course, we can stop at a place like Casa del Cafe along the way. We'll stop a few places, hit the bathroom. We'll stop someplace and grab a quick breakfast. We'll stop and get a coffee. A few little things, but not a lot. All of them we'll make really quick. We'll run in, run out, eat in the car, whatever. Four, four and a half hours, we're at the border. We try to get there before nine. Bear, uh, even better if it's closer to eight, get in before the morning buses get there. And often our time going through the Nicaraguan exit border is about 10 to 15 minutes. Then it's probably about 10 to 15 minutes to get between Nicaragua and Costa Rican border controls. Get to Costa Rica, again, uh, probably about another 15 minutes. Then into Costa Rica, there's a little bit of a hairpin with a tax office there. Now, traditionally, we've had to go to that tax office and that takes a good 10 minutes. That is no longer required. If you know what you're doing, 
skip that, go straight back into the entrance building for Costa Rica, look to the back right corner, kind of as you're facing the booth, look in the corner. It's the only things that look like ATM machines, right? There's computers that kind of look like ATM machines. Head over there, you can pay your taxes there. That's gonna cut your cost by $2. It'll be $8 instead of 10, and it will be fast. It's like two minutes instead of 10, right? So really easy. And then you're inside the building, you can see what's going on, whatever, and they know you're going through the line. So that makes it a little bit cheaper and a lot more convenient and you don't have to walk over to the other building, which isn't far, but you know, that's a whole step you don't have to do anymore. Um, and then generally that Costa Rica in or out is very quick, just five minutes. Uh, again, a 15 minute walk back to Nicaragua and then going into Nicaragua, this is where you've, you've been there for a little bit longer. This is where you have a risk that there's a lot of people coming in from Costa Rica by that time. But generally we're getting in within 30 to 40 minutes. It can be longer, but and we have been lucky and gotten in in just 10 minutes before, for sure. We've, we've definitely had 10 minute times and the last several times have been very fast, but you can't guarantee it. But that's it, we're back in. So the last few times we've been all the way through the process and back into Nicaragua by 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe 10.30. At that point, it's just a four hour drive back home. So we're looking at getting home in the early afternoon. But there's some beautiful spots along the way. So we really like to stop in Hinotepe, which is around about halfway back. They have really great restaurants there. It's a famous restaurant city within the country. So if you're living here, you're probably aware that it's a fantastic just destination for restaurants. Like the, the number of restaurants per person per capita is excellent. Um, and the restaurant quality is really good. Like they're just a town known for restaurants. So if you're coming through, well, we're stopping. We love to stop and get coffee there. Cafe Alicia is, is really, really excellent. And we love to go to the Malaysian vegetarian restaurant. One of the best restaurants in the country, one of my favorite spots to stop, well worth it. Sometimes the kids actually get excited about doing border runs because they can go there. Now, talking about getting excited about doing border runs, for many of us, we're here, especially if you're here in Nicaragua all the time and you're doing the border run and it's your only interaction with the outside world, once you're getting to Costa Rica, well, you're already in Costa Rica. What if you'd like to go do some restaurants or do some types of shopping that aren't available in Nicaragua? We don't want to do that very often. You may want to do it all the time, in which case you don't have to worry about border runs. You'll be resetting your visas all the time. But if you're doing it only for a border run, but then decide we well, have an ink, you just have a hankering right for Taco Bell, or you want to get Indian food, or you just want to go to some place you really like in Costa Rica, or you want to explore the country more, that's fine. Go use that opportunity, take a vacation in Costa Rica, no problem there. So just consider that that could be a part of your border run process if you're here in Nicaragua, but you're a fan of Costa Rica and who isn't, right? It's a great opportunity to once or twice a year, add in a little bit of time in Costa Rica for essentially no additional effort. You're already there, why not go on just a little bit farther? Now, if you wanna to go to the far side of Costa Rica, that will still be a bit of effort, but still you're in Costa Rica, hop the bus or whatever and enjoy yourself. And since you will be based in Nicaragua, it's probably going to be lower cost for you to interact with Costa Rica just because you're, you're leaving things behind. You don't have to bring your whole world with you. You're not that far away. And getting home is really quick and easy. So the whole border run process, remember, maximum of twice a year. And it's really not that, that time consuming. And you always have that opportunity that you're going to want to be in Costa Rica or Mexico if you're going the other direction as well. Or if you decide to fly someone, you can always combine it with something. And that brings me to my other point, which is a really important one that I think people tend to overlook. And it really shouldn't be overlooked because it's incredibly significant. And that point is that most expats, and by most, I mean essentially all, there are certainly exceptions, but essentially all expats are going to be traveling somewhere at some point throughout the year. Almost all of us either go back to our home countries, often the US or Canada, maybe Europe, Many of us want to go on vacations or just see the world. So that could be going to Mexico, Colombia, Europe, Southeast Asia, the Philippines, whatever. Uh, and then many of us also still work. Many are retired and don't need to go anywhere. But there's lots of us who travel for work. I was just in Bolivia in November, if you guys remember that. Uh, so things like that you may not think about. But if you start to calculate them in, how often would you naturally travel living in Nicaragua. Well, for us, it basically comes out to one to two times per year. For everyone in the family, we're gonna end up going somewhere. And that's basically where we've been. I was in Bolivia in November. My wife, Dominica, was in uh, Thailand and Vietnam in April. We are going to be in um, um, in Mexico in March, as well as the United States. And with all those things, there's many times that we don't have to worry about getting our visas renewed because we're going to be in other countries during that time. So 
So uh, naturally, just already, it doesn't matter what our visa situation is. Nicaragua could be like, you don't need to go anywhere. And we'd still have these things we have to do. So it's uh, very convenient for us that that eliminates border runs a number of times because we're already going somewhere and the border run, the renewal process for the visa is automatic in us traveling to those places. So when you stop and add up all those factors, how often you actually need to do it, how little effort it actually takes, how cheap it actually is, it's generally round about $20, $25 for the entire process, not including the travel. If you have a car, that's going to cost you fuel. If you take a bus, it's a little bit more time, but very cheap. Um, there's always some way to do it. And depending on where you are in the country, there may be people doing border runs that you can tag along with and you can always orchestrate with people. Um, but then if you're just traveling for work or vacation or doing family visits back to your own country or some other, all those things are going to knock down the number of times you need to do border runs. And we have found that living here for three years, we've only had to do border runs two or three times in all that time. And there were times that we could have worked around it, but mostly with us settling in, starting new businesses, getting uh, really our feet under us here in Nicaragua and, and just things being very shut down in the early time when we got here because we, we moved in under COVID. Uh, there was a lot of not going anywhere kind of built into the way the world was at the time. Now we're starting to travel again and now border runs are disappearing for us. We actually did most of our border runs at the beginning of our time here and they're starting to wane. There's also a very important point. If you're not here all the time, if you're here just in and out, like you're only living here six months of the year, well, you don't need to do border runs at all unless you're going over the six month, over the 180 day mark. If you're coming in like you're a snowbird and you're living, say, in the United States or Canada when it's warm and you're coming here when it's cold there, well, as long as you limit to 180 days here, you don't need to border run ever. So that may be a way that you eliminate it. But also, if you're here full time, if you are in a position where the border runs are starting in any way to become annoying, meaning you have to do them consistently and you've had to do them for some amount of time at some point, And I don't know when this is. It can vary, but it'll generally never be under a year and often not more than five. Somewhere in the two to three year range, typically you're going to get the talk from the government that says, look, Clearly, you've decided to live here. That's great, but we need to move past the tourist system and move you into a, uh, a, a residencia. We need to get you your residency. And so at that point, you start that conversation, figure out what that's going to look like, make your decisions, and start planning around that. And while that process can take a while and you could continue to do border runs during that time, it does at least in some way put a cap on the maximum length of border runs that you could do. If you're truly here full time, which is the only way, remember, it's only if you're here full time that you have much of any chance to be impacted even in a pretty minor way by the inconveniences of having to do border runs, then you will hit that number quite quickly. And if you're not here large swaths of time, they will never tell you you need to uh, do anything else. But then you're really not affected by the border runs because you never have to do them or almost never. So in that situation, it is extremely rare that someone will need to do border runs with any regularity more than three to five years. I do know people who've gone a little bit farther than that, maybe seven or eight years. That's an outlier and that is an extreme case, but that's plausible. But in general, you're looking at just three or four years, most likely, until you end up with residency and you don't have to do border runs anymore. So when you're thinking, and the reason that we're talking about this is one, I don't want anyone to be afraid of border runs. You should say, oh, well, sure, it's inconvenient, but it's a really minor inconvenience. And two, you should say, and I shouldn't really plan my life around border runs unless I have a really unique situation because, of course, one, they're not a big deal. So it doesn't matter if you are coming from Esteli, it's still not that big of a deal. Here in Leon, we're in the largest group of expats that you could consider to be an expat community in some way at the farthest distance from the border. And for us, we consider it a completely trivial task that needs to be done. It is so nothing. It feels absurd to try to say that it's a pain to do. Sure, that day is kind of a long day, but it's just not that big of a deal. So when you put all that together, what you don't want to be doing is making decisions like where you want to live, where you want to buy a house, anything. You really don't want you to make life affecting decisions with how far it is to the border taken into account based on border runs. Now, there 
could be great reasons that you want to live up here in Leon, for example, because we're very close to Honduras. If you love going to Honduras or there's things up there you need to do, great, it's just two hours away. If you really want to go to Costa Rica all the time, not because you need to do a border run, but because you love Costa Rica and you want to spend time there, that's fantastic. Yes, living in Rivas or one of the other places near the border would make that a lot more convenient. But considering border runs themselves at a maximum of two times a year, at a, so two out of 360 days being somewhat affected, and it's not like you can reasonably live anywhere where the effect is zero. The closest major settlement to the border is San Juan del Sur, and that's still 30 to 45 minutes away from the border. That's a lot less than the four, four and a half hours you're gonna do from one of the Northwestern cities, but it's not nothing. It's not to a point where you can just bicycle around the corner. And so because of that, it really, the, the difference in effort, the difference in, in how much it impacts your life over the course of the year is really minor. You could live in basically any populated portion, including most of the countryside, just some places that are associated with the city, pretty much anywhere in the country, and the border runs would be a nominal effort. So I, I encourage you to not think of border runs much at all, right? Do not put them into your planning for where you're going to live, why you would want to live somewhere, anything like that. They're just not that significant. But also, do put into your planning how you might use a border run uh, schedule in order to visit another place that you'd like to get a cheap, cool vacation out of, maybe just two or three days in Costa Rica, maybe a week in Mexico, whatever. Figure out how you can put those things together in really effective ways so that you actually don't have to do a border run at all. And uh, of course, as always, you know, think about when your residency will make sense. Does it make sense for you? What your big game plan is? But border runs really aren't a big deal. Don't let it worry you. Um, and, and don't worry about other people constantly reacting to it. I don't know why they do, but I've never had someone who actually does border runs act like they're a big deal. It's only people who are being told you're gonna have to do this border run and they imagine that it's this really big convoluted thing when it's not. And I need to mention that if you get your residency, especially your retirement residency, you're still required to do paperwork every six months, which is uh, the same frequency that you have to do the border run. And that paperwork, at least currently, it, there's talk that this will change, but currently has to be done in Managua. So if you live in some place like San Juan del Sur and, uh, or even in Chinandega, you may find, well, in the north, it's a little bit different. We'll stick with, with San Juan del Sur. If you switch from doing border runs to your residency, you may actually find that the distance you need to travel increases rather than decreases when you switch from border runs to your residency. And the residency does not get bypassed by leaving the country, whereas the, the border run process does. So if you were to take a vacation every six months and go to Colombia, South Africa, Egypt, Thailand and do that over a course of years, you may never need to do a border run, even though you're in Nicaragua almost all the time. It would take a little bit of planning, but it wouldn't be bad. If you were a resident in Nicaragua and went to those same places on the exact same schedule, you would additionally have to schedule going into Managua and doing the paperwork to keep your residency current. It's not technically the residency itself, but it is the cedula, which is the paperwork associated with having residency. And so you would have to do that more often, you would still have to do that every six months when the, the, the border run would not have to be done every six months. And if you live in San Juan del Sur, the border is closer than Managua. So th that's a weird artifact that I think people are not aware of and don't plan around at all. And still not a big deal, but it is a nuisance. So you can think of it that the border run system never goes away. And if you see the border run as a big deal, you're gonna see the Cedula run as a big deal in reality, neither should be. And by the time you're doing them, like you've been here for six months, uh, for the first time you do a border run and probably he here for two years before the first time you do a Cedula run, you're gonna be pretty comfortable with the country under normal circumstances. You're gonna know people who can tell you where to go. You're gonna be able to speak the language a little bit. You're gonna be used to how the government works and you'll be able to go through those processes without a big deal. Thanks for joining me, like, and subscribe. As always, if you could support the channel, that would mean a lot to me and everyone who works to put this together. And you can do that by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It's just like Patreon, it comes just to me. Just put down a credit card and you can just buy me a coffee or two or three or 10 would be amazing. Um, and it helps. We have 
have so many cameras and computers and things that we need to do the show. That's how we pay for this, as well as traveling around the region. That is not free either, so we really appreciate everyone who helps to make that possible. We also really appreciate when you guys go and like and subscribe and join those other channels too. We're, we're really building a travel community, not just Nicaragua, but Latin America and travel in general and cameras, uh, a lot of different channels. Please go support as many as you can handle finding interesting. Really appreciate that as well. If you do have that VR headset, give that a try. Tell your friends about the show. Post on any social media you can find, even just on a webpage. And I will see all of you tomorrow.